Let's now take a look at the Bink Looper to see how to create a performance like you just watched. I'm going to load in the MIDI device version of the Bink Looper onto this MIDI track here. So it loads up as a MIDI instrument. Now how you use this device is to not interact with it directly, but instead set up clip automation envelopes to trigger the various parameters. So you do this in dummy clips, which I created on the same track. So if I double click here, I can create an empty MIDI clip. Let me rename this to record MIDI. Now within this MIDI clip, we will create clip envelopes for the different parameters we want to activate. Let's check out the parameters. The first one here is the scene selector onto which you want to record. So if I select scene one here, it's gonna record onto scene one. We only have eight options here because I only have eight scenes in this current session. The next feature is to arm the track. So right now the track is not armed, but I have this option to reset, off, or turn on arming of the track. I'm not entirely sure what reset does. In the help here it says the reset button is a workaround so the arm button doesn't jump off when you record your new clip. Now I'm not sure what they mean by jump off, while at the same time it says it doesn't affect the arm button. So I would just ignore this. Just use off and on and it works fine. All right, next feature is the actual launching of the clip. If the track is armed, obviously it's gonna record the clip instead. This is helpful if you wanna record something but not loop back the recording. I'll demonstrate this a bit later on. Next is a delete option, which can be used to delete a particular clip before recording into that clip slot. Pretty handy option here. Quantization of the MIDI clip can be very helpful, but unfortunately it only works after the recording is done. So you can't really automate this. After a recording is done, you will have to click on Quantize to activate the quantization. Of course, you can choose to MIDI map it and use an external controller to activate it. Next is the loop length. Here you define how long you want to record for. It's measured in beats. So if I set this to 16 beats, it's going to record for two bars, assuming the time signature is 4-4. Four, four. There's a very handy delay option. So it will wait for the number of beats you type in here before it starts the recording. So if I set this to four beats, once we activate the automation, it's going to wait for four beats before it starts recording those 16 beats. I'm going to set it to zero so it starts the recording immediately. And then that's just the record indicator. Next is the write automation button. Now this could be a handy option. So if I click over here, it can create automation breakpoints for all the parameters on the selected clip. So click on the button and now go into the MIDI clip, go into the envelopes category here but you'll notice we don't have any assigned automation breakpoints for any of the parameters. So I believe this only works with CliffX Pro, but we can ignore that and just create the automation breakpoints manually. I'll click on show all envelopes over here. Now we see the Bink Looper, and these are all the different parameters. So yes, it's a little tedious. It would have been nice if that envelope write option worked, but let's go ahead and create the envelopes manually. Let's start with automating delete. The order is important. So when this clip is launched, the first thing that would activate is the deleting of existing clips in the clip slot and placing that breakpoint close to the beginning of the clip. To make this easier, I'm gonna turn off the grid and then move that breakpoint manually closer to the beginning of the clip. Now, a few things we need to disable on this clip. I'll turn off looping and I'll also make sure quantization is set to none. So when I launch this clip, it launches immediately. All right, so when this clip is launched, we will delete whatever's on that clip slot. I've set it to scene one, so scene one, clip slot one. Next, let's arm the track. Select arm, so there's reset, off, and on. Let's set it to on. And then finally, the next thing we want to do is to launch the recording. Now the recording needs to happen after those first two actions. Over here, I can select only show adjusted envelopes. So we will just see the three. And now I can scroll through the three ensuring that they're in the correct order. So delete first, arm next, and then launch. All right, so that's all set up for recording. Now what about an actual instrument? Right now this MIDI track has the Bing Clooper device, so I can't load another device over here because it'll just replace it. And we do need the Bing Clooper. So I'll set up a separate track with the device. So I'll load in this drum rack here. And now from the first MIDI track, in the MIDI 2 dropdown, I will select that second track. So now the MIDI from the Bink Looper will be routed to the Equinox Kit drum rack. I'm just gonna change up some of the sounds over here. So we have a hi-hat and a ride.
All right, now the next thing we need to do is to launch this when we're ready to record. So I will MIDI map it. I already did this earlier, so I'll delete it and demonstrate this again. So select the clip slot, hit a button on the controller, and now it's mapped. On the track that has the drum rack, I'm going to turn on input monitoring and disarm the track. So as long as the first track is armed, the MIDI would automatically be routed to the drum rack. Now I don't have to arm the track because we've already set up Bink Looper to arm the track. Now even though we disabled launch quantization for this particular clip, the Bink Looper will follow the global quantization here. So we just need to activate this clip right before the beginning of a bar and Bink Looper will do its thing right at the beginning of that bar. Now I'm going to start the transport in live so we hear the metronome. And I'm going to trigger that clip right before the next bar. And as you can see, after two bars, it loops whatever we just played in. As you can see and here, it's not quite on time, especially that first hit. So we will have to activate quantization manually. So let's MIDI map this to a button. I'll use this button here. I'll choose the quantization value of a 16th note. All right, so now if you look at the clip, when I hit that button, everything is quantized. Let's try this again. I'll stop all clips. You don't have to delete it. It'll get deleted automatically. As soon as I launch that record MIDI clip. Tap the quantize button immediately after playing and now it's perfectly quantized. Now there's another feature we didn't look at, which is the stop option. So let's quickly take a look at that. I'm going to go ahead and automate that particular parameter. It's called record stop here. And let's activate this value. So for some reason we can set this up beforehand, but we can't activate quantization beforehand. Anyway, let's give this a try. Just to run through this example quickly, I'm gonna reduce this to eight beats. So that's gonna be just one bar. Disarm the track, I'll stop all clips, and let's try this again. So as you notice, it did not loop back the performance, but it did record it in. Now the same thing can be done with audio tracks. I have an audio track here. I'm gonna set the input to one, two, so it'll receive the signal from my synthesizer here. So for audio looping, we will have to use the audio version of the Bink Looper. So I'll drag that and drop it on the audio track. It loads up as a device here on the audio track. And one convenient thing is you do not have to set up another audio track. You can record directly on the same audio track. Now we cannot create a dummy clip by double clicking on a clip slot. So we will have to just drag in any audio clip and just bring the volume down on that audio clip so it doesn't produce any sound when it's triggered. Turn off looping. We can't turn off warp, otherwise we won't have access to the clip envelopes. So leave the warp on, but definitely turn the quantization to a none. I'm going to rename this audio clip Record Audio. As you can see, the device looks pretty much the same. You can choose a scene you want to record on, the arming option, recording option. So let's go ahead and create envelopes for the parameters. So just like the MIDI track, we're going to first start with arming. I'll turn off the grid again so I can place this as close as possible to the beginning of the clip. Actually, we did delete first, but it doesn't matter. You can arm or delete first. And then the launching of the recording. This needs to happen after. And the rest we leave as is. Before we start recording, we need to define the loop length. Let's set it to 16 so it records for two bars. 
I'm just going to adjust the levels for the two tracks here. Again, don't have to arm the track because the bink looper will do the arming. Now we need to MIDI map this particular clip. I'll use this button here on my controller. While we're here, let's also set up quantization. So yes, you can quantize audio clips as well. So I'm going to map another button on my controller to that quantize button. All right, so now we have four mappings on this controller. This is the launch the recording on the MIDI track, and then the quantization for the MIDI track, then quantization for the audio track, and recording for the audio track. I'm just going to demonstrate the audio recording for now, so I'll leave that MIDI drum pattern playing, so I can turn off the metronome. All right, so we're going to record 16 beats or two bars when I launch this clip. I can quantize audio now. If you look at the waveform here, and when I tap quantization, we get these warp markers that are perfectly quantized to the grid. So that's how you can record MIDI with the MIDI version of Bink Looper, and then audio with the audio version of Bink Looper. But now the fun stuff happens when you use both of them simultaneously. So let's say I wanna just hit one button to activate recording on the MIDI clip, and then immediately after recording that, I want to start recording on the audio clip without having to push any button. We can do this by making use of the delay option. So on the audio looper, I'm going to set the delay to 8 beats. And on the MIDI looper, I'm going to set the recording to 8 beats. So this is going to record for a bar. And at the same time, if I had launched both those clips together, this device is going to wait for 8 beats before it starts recording 16 beats. I'm just going to go ahead and disable that stop option that I had set up earlier because I do not want it to stop. I want it to continue looping. So record stop. I'm going to delete this automation breakpoint. Just select the whole thing and hit delete. Now we do have clips on both the tracks, but since we've set up delete, it's going to clear out those existing recordings. I want to change my MIDI mapping because I want to trigger both those with the same button. So I'll change this MIDI mapping to that first button. So they both have the same MIDI mapping, so they will trigger simultaneously. I'll turn the metronome back on. Okay, so I'm ready to perform in the drum pattern and then immediately jump over to the synth. So I'll record the drums for one bar and then immediately record the synth for two bars. Let's give this a try. I'll turn off the metronome. I can quantize the audio with that button, quantize the MIDI with that button. Both are now perfectly on the grid. To have a little bit more fun with this, let's add a fade to gray to the master. I'll map this knob here to the fade to gray knob. All right, so that's how you can use the Bink Looper to create your live looping performances. I hope you found this video helpful. Stay tuned for more.